Hey guys, John here. Today we're in Pigment, and I made a video a while ago about generative patches, and uh, a couple of people asked a little bit more about them, so I was like, you know what, let's kind of revisit this topic a little bit and kind of just show, I guess, the concept of what makes it kind of cool, and then from there you can kind of make whatever sound or timbre, texture, whatever you want. But this one kind of sounds like this here. Now this one is set in a minor key, so if you're playing a song in, in whatever minor scale that you're playing, whatever root note that that song is in, if you play it, then just hold it down, it's just gonna sound good in that uh, in that song. So the concept here is that we're only using a couple steps here in the sequencer, and obviously, like I said, it's gonna be in natural minor, and we're doing this auto region at one bar, which obviously you can change. But the whole point is that we hold down a note and it's going to play these random notes. It's not going to be the same every single time. It's going to be different, but it's still going to be in that same key. So, yeah. Now, generally, this type of patch isn't going to be like the forefront. It's not necessarily going to be a lead. It can be something that's kind of sitting almost in the in the mix with a pad or maybe something kind of more in the background. That's kind of it's still keeping the melody alive, the the I guess the tonality of the track, but still keeping it interesting, giving it some rhythm and kind of just fitting in. So it's kind of like a like a pad plus a sequence, like a pad plus five bucks, I guess. So let's go and uh, check this out here. So new preset now for this one. I didn't want to do anything too complex. I kind of wanted to focus more on the programming side. So I went to the analog engine and keep in mind, you can do whatever texture you want. So I did a triangle wave here. And then I went to the sample engine to kind of pick something that might be kind of cool. So maybe piano and key, what I go for like string plucked, maybe a harp that, that might be kind of interesting. So that's going to be our texture. Okay, it's kind of cool. It's not amazing, but like I said, the uh, the process is within the programming and some of the effects, right? So this is going to be our starter thing. Feel free to change out your samples or your, your waveforms. Okay, so for this one, we want to drop the sustain. A smooth decay. You want it kind of quick, but not too choking because that's kind of ridiculous. And again, match this release here. Okay, so we have something kind of like that. That's cool. Maybe a little bit in the uh, in the filter we can do stuff. So again, I love the MS-20, a little bit of resonance. Let's go to our envelope. That might be kind of cool. Okay, so we have this texture here. So here we can go into the sequencer and let's turn this on. So. First thing what I kind of did here is I looked at this and said, okay, I don't need all of these steps here. I took most of these out. So maybe something kind of like this. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, I guess. Maybe let's take that one out. So let's say we have six steps here, total of 16 possibilities. Now here in the rate, this kind of really depends. Obviously it's the speed, but it depends on how fast you want things to go. And this is going to be important because we're going to be adding a lot of delays that kind of fill the holes of where these sequences are not going to be playing. So for this here, we're going to go to our mode and go to random. Now, an important part of this is kind of just play a note and kind of just see how often we hear some notes. And if it's too much, take a step out. If it's too little, add a step. So for this, it might be a little bit too much. So I'll take a step out. Okay, that might be kind of cool. And it's also random. What's really cool is that it's random in the sense that it's not going to hit the same note on your uh, song every single time, right? Because we have these ones that are going to be off and it's going to trigger those, but we don't hear anything. So that's another cool part. Not only is it going to be random notes, but it's going to be happening at random times. So we kind of those are kind of both playing off of each other. Okay, so for this here, let's go to uh, the natural minor scale, something kind of like that. That's going to be interesting. And then we can dice this a couple of random times, which is cool because it dices a lot of other stuff as well. And then depending on this percentage here, we can decide how much of that uh, parameter we want randomized. So for this, I think it's kind of cool because we have a little bit of slide in there that makes it interesting. And then we have some gate length because not every single note is going to be the same length. So we're really trying to play off that randomness, but a controlled randomness. 
but it sounded like a song. Dun, dun, dun. I think, oh my God, that sounded like some song out there. I don't know. If you know what I'm talking about, please let me know in the comments below. It's going to drive me crazy. Okay, so let's say we like the selection of notes. We could totally stop here if we want to with this G sharp, C, 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 G, C, right? So we're really only having three different notes, but they're going to be playing obviously different times. So that might be kind of cool to keep it a little bit, a little bit more cohesive. However, I do think that doing a little bit of auto regen can be interesting. So I did the last one on one bar or something like that. So here's all C's, right? And then we have here a D, G sharp. I have an F over here. See, that was a cool little slide there. So right now it kind of sounds kind of boring, right? kind of sounds like my first patch you know what i'm saying <laughs> like a fisher price patch but this is kind of the stuff you want to focus on first it should be kind of boring in the beginning and then once we add the effects it's gonna be kind of interesting and then your track the pads and kind of sneaking that in there it's gonna be kind of cool okay so we have this here i think for now this is going to be okay we can always come back to this so for the effects this is kind of important i mean you can do some different eqing if you want it's really dependent on your uh on your source material so your your waveforms, your samples, wavetables, whatever it is you choose. But for here, for FXA, this delay is gonna be important. So let's turn this guy up a little bit. And maybe turn down this low pass so we can really differentiate between the actual direct signal and the delays. So there is kind of already sounding cool and this timing is going to be one over four. So that's fine. Now, instead of this reverb, actually, let's just, uh, let's move this down one because we're probably going to use that reverb and let's add another delay. And a thing I always love doing is going into the dotted and then making this one an eighth. So we have a quarter note at straight time and then an eighth note at dotted. And it's kind of cool. And then making the eighth note ping pong. Now we're starting to get somewhere. We have the randomness that we went through for the sequencer. Now for the effects, we have this quarter note delay and then the eighth note dotted delay, which is ping pong. We can maybe even bring this up just a little bit more. Okay, this is starting to be cool. Now something else I do like randomizing is gonna be the stereo field because sometimes it's cool having these notes bounce around the field and we don't know exactly where they're coming from. A couple of them could be on the left speaker or the right, the center, and they just move and we don't really know what to expect, which makes it even more random and what better to do that with than a random modulation source. So random one, we can drag and drop this guy to our voice pan. Now, as you see, this is going to be unipolar, and we don't really want that because it's just going to be center and right, which kind of defeats that purpose. So let's go over to sample and hold here. So we're kind of moving around like this and maybe give it a little bit more, a little bit more depth. Now, this is totally up to you how wide you want this. If you do it super wide, like so the maximum value can be a little weird. So definitely up to you. Experiment with that. But here in sample and hold. The retrigger source here, we can go to the clock. Now this is gonna be cool because we can decide how fast this random modulation source is gonna be moving. Now remember, our first delay is a quarter note. The second delay is the eighth note dotted. Now we need to kind of think, okay, how do we want this to rhythmically move across the stereo field? So here it's one over eight, so let's see how that sounds. And here's full max here all the way, so 100%. Now that can totally be cool for me. It's a little bit much. So I kind of dial like, I like to dial this down a little bit less, maybe something right around here. So it's not completely left, right. Okay, so that's kind of cool. So now we want to go back to our effects here and dial in some reverb, maybe some other stuff too, depending on what we like here. So let's see how the reverb sounds with this. Well, let's wait till that goes down, but changing the size always makes it sound weird.
And let's see if we go to this FXA and maybe we can add something a little bit more interesting too. Maybe a phaser. And let's experiment a little bit more. Maybe FXB, we can do a flanger. So it's kind of mysterious, kind of a background thing. And keep in mind, so as we did the uh, the voice panning with this random modulator, we don't always only have to use this for the voice pan. Something that might be kind of interesting if move our reverb down over here one more time. So maybe let's say in this last effects chain, we can think and say, maybe with this random source, I can use this for a random, um, I guess a random distortion or something like that. That may be kind of interesting. So we have distortion, maybe our dry wet all the way down, increase the drive a little bit like that. And then use this source over here. And maybe since this one is bipolar, we can maybe use the second one actually, but the same settings, right? So maybe get random two and drag and drop this here. So that's fine. The retrig, let's do the clock and again, eighth note. But now if we do have another random source, now we have a choice of doing a different speed. So maybe this might be kind of cool. I don't really know. That might be interesting so let's go to Turing here so if you look here it's only going to go into positive values so maybe we went all the way down and see how this sounds So some of them get a little bit distorted, some of them a little bit less distorted. So that might be kind of cool as well. And then maybe we can change the rate to like one over two or something. So kind of play off that idea. And then now that we have these two different random sources that we have in use, what else can we apply? If you go back to our synth here, maybe if we're in the analog, maybe we can do some interesting things, you know, doing a little bit more noise or something like that randomly throughout the patch, or maybe doing stuff with the voices and detune if you want to do something like that. It all depends on the source material that you're using. Like I said, the waveforms, the samples, and then depending on what might sound cool, these random sources might be very interesting on kind of changing a little bit of that source material, which then runs through your effects stack, which makes it even more interesting, or even just changing stuff in your effects as well. That might be kind of cool too. So yeah, that's a kind of a fun way to kind of go about the, uh, the generative types of patches. And then for the macros, maybe you can do the speed here. So maybe you can slow it down if you really want to or speed it up, something kind of like that. That might be interesting. Stuff on your filter or maybe your effects entirely or just different uh, types of your source stuff. Maybe going through a different wavetable position or who knows what. I mean, it really depends on what you're putting into the effects because the, the most important part is, aside from the source stuff, is gonna be the sequencer, how you set that up here and your effects, especially your delays and kind of just filling up the space there because we do want this sequence to be a little bit sparse because this is more of a background thing like i was saying it's not going to be the forefront it's supposed to kind of just be that gentle thing in the background whether you're doing more slower paced music ambient soundscapes kind of things like that this is a perfect thing for that Keep in mind, whatever scale this is, change it over here on the generation. If you're doing something in a major melodic minor, harmonic minor, which is one of my favorite scales of all time, blues, fifth, well, you know, there's a lot of choices here that you can go through in this one as well. And here in the generative, you can acid, contrasting minor, bass strike. I mean, feel free to mess around with these. You have a lot of choices, or you can go to a custom one and input your own notes that way. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something, try out some of these generative things. It's a lot of fun and it makes things feel a little bit less predictable. So yeah, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.